Well, welcome to chemistry. <clears throat> We're going to talk about page 1121 today and give you a little introduction to the course. Um, you're probably in 11th grade, maybe 12th grade, working through this, starting to think through what are you going to do after high school. And I think chemistry is a course that really helps prepare you <clears throat> for lots of things that you may face in life. Maybe it'll be an occupation where you use some chemistry, but that just kind of unlocks your understanding of how God designed our world. So I think it's a cool course. The hardest part about chemistry is probably the math. And uh, that's why you have me. I, I am a math and science teacher. And uh, I have been a teacher for 35 years as I'm making this. I'll just tell you briefly about myself. I grew up in Hawaii, hence the Aloha shirt. <clears throat> I grew up in Hawaii back in the uh, 70s and 80s and then went to Bible college, got married, took my wife back to Hawaii where we taught for five years before we moved to Pennsylvania. I grew up in an ACE school <clears throat> that used all paces and uh, since then, except for the world history course, they have revised all the paces to be a newer addition. The chemistry that I did when I was in high school was horrible. It was not very well written at all, and it used a, <clears throat> excuse me, a college textbook that was very hard to understand, and I had nobody to help me. So when I would get stuck, my supervisor would say, I'm sorry, I can't figure it out. Skip that part and go on to the next part. And of course, the next part would build on what I, did, what I had skipped. I'd try to ask people in church if they could help me, and they would study it and say, wow, I don't get this. So it was really rough, but I got to college, had a good teacher in college, learned chemistry. Um, I do have a confession to make. Okay, you ready? I have been teaching chemistry using two or three other curriculums. I've never taught the paces. In fact, here in our Christian school, we use the Apologia chemistry course, <clears throat> and I do it as a class, and we do it lockstep. But I know we have a lot of students, uh, even in other countries, who are doing PACES, and they have to do chemistry using the PACES, and chemistry is chemistry. So I'm going to work through these PACES this year, and my commitment to you <clears throat> is I'm going to help you be successful and uh, see success as you work through your PACE, hence the name of my website, PACE Success, all right? Trying to help students see success as they work through their PACES. <clears throat> Excuse me. Chemistry is not an easy course, but we'll try to help you understand it. You need to work hard at understanding it. If you have the mindset that you did back in maybe 7th, 8th grade where you just thought, let me just quick find the answer, fill it in, um, <clears throat> get somebody else's study guide and just quick memorize answers, you're not going to do well in chemistry. You really need to try to understand what you're doing, and it does keep building, all right? So, um, like I said, the hardest part is the math, and we'll give you some tips along the way and, and help you with that. A lot of this first pace <clears throat> talks about some of the key people in history and their contribution to chemistry. I'm not going to reteach that, okay? Talks about all the different branches of chemistry. I'm not going to reteach all of that. That's pretty easy to just read and understand. There are some sections already in this first pace about math. I will dive in and help you with that. I have some suggestions that will help you be successful. Are you ready? With every pace, here's what I think you ought to do. And this, these are tips that will help you prepare for college as well. Okay? One of the things I tell my students is when you are in especially 11th, 12th grade, you need to better understand how you think, how you learn, and how what study methods work the best for you to master content. <clears throat> And that's the goal, all right? So you're going to be learning not only chemistry, you're going to be learning about yourself as you go through this. Here's a technique that works really well for this course. It'll work well if you're doing um, civics and economics either this year or next. And that is, <clears throat> we're going to do the front, the back, we're going to skim, and then we're going to dive deep, okay? So by the front, I mean you take your pace, and you're probably used to skipping over this, and you think, eh, no big deal. I think you really need to look at the outline on the first page, all right? Because that kind of gives you a quick bird's eye view of what will be covered in the pace. 
Some of that you may recognize because if you have done physical science, which I sure hope you've done before you get to this, a lot of this was covered in physical science, but now we're going to review it and do more. So you can see the topics listed here. Then by back, I mean pull out. So this is a course where you have a separate activity pack from the textbook part. And I mean literally go to the self-test, okay? And look at the self-test and see what kind of things, wow, look at all these. We have a lot of terms here that we're gonna have to match up. And then there's some questions here. We can see uh, quantities. Um, <clears throat> and the units that they're measured in, we're going to have to know that. We can see that we're going to have to make some conversions. We're going to have to solve some problems with tens raised to exponents. And we have some problems on the back here to solve. We're converting to scientific notation, significant figures. Oh, wow. Remember that from physical science? Yeah. We'll cover that. So once you realize, wow, those, those are all the things I'm going to need to have mastered for the self-test, <clears throat> Then, when you go back and work through the pace, it actually prepares your brain, okay? This is called imprinting the brain to know what do I need to know by the time I get to the end. Now we go back. You probably are going to say, I don't need to do that, Mr. Anger, but I'm serious. This will help. We're going to skim through the whole pace. I want you to literally read the whole pace, but in a, in a faster way than you've ever done before. So let's see, I have a piece of paper here. <clears throat> here on page three, for instance, take a piece of paper and you hold it above the text and you just slide it down the page like this, just about that fast, and let your eye just keep bouncing from left to right to left to right, kind of in a Z fashion, and you just go down the page. Don't stop and read every, every word, don't worry about it, okay? You're just trying to get a bird's eye view. And we skim down this page, take the primary experiment, formulate the hypothesis, test the hypothesis, formulate a theory, there's a general principle, communicating the results. All right? You just do that all the way through the pace. It should take you maybe 20, 30 minutes at the most, an hour. Okay, no more than that. If you do more than that, you, you were trying to read too much. <clears throat> you are going to go back and read the whole pace, okay? But by, again, reading the whole thing, it kind of prepares your brain for what it's going to receive. It's not wasted time. I'm serious. You will do much better in all of you, the, the entire course, if you follow front, back, skim, and then you go back and you do the deep dive. <clears throat> this is where you set the goals. You read a few pages in here. You're going to answer a few pages in here. And then when you're done, score it right away. Okay? Don't wait till you get to the checkup. Every day, score. At the end of that day, score what you did that day to make sure. This is especially important when you do the math problems. Because what happens is if you didn't learn it correctly, and you put the answers down, and then you move on, your brain thinks you wrote the right thing down, and then you go to bed, and what happens is all the knowledge that's in your head, the brain organizes it, makes patterns out of it, weaves it together, and then locks it in place in your brain. And if you had the wrong material, and you made some mistakes, and you didn't understand it, you, it's going to be harder now to unlearn it than it would have been to learn it correctly. But if you immediately get feedback, you score it, you say, oh man, I missed that. What's your, where, where was that? And you go back and you find it and you correct it. Now you're helping your brain put the information in the right place. Okay, this is good educational psychology I'm trying to help you with here. Um, there was something else I was going to say about that, and it just flew right out of my mind. Let's talk about two, <clears throat> two other things that are in the pace in the middle. You are going to pull out what's called a teen life principles. Okay? Um, you maybe have done the wisdom packs in uh, English. This is kind of like that. It's geared more for definitely 11th, 12th graders. This first one right off the bat is talking about dating. So... Talk to your parents about it and uh, get their input on whether, you know, 
When these pieces were written, dating was a more common thing. Today, a lot of, a lot of families, churches, schools encourage teens to not be thinking about boy-girl relationships. That's our rule here in our school. And wait until your college age and seek the Lord's wisdom to your parents' input, but stop thinking about boyfriend-girlfriend stuff. It'll really distract you from your studies. That's my personal take. Take it for what it's worth. Um, but there are a few questions from that on the self-test and sometimes even on the PACE test. So it is good to uh, read through that and get, get that information. All right, then there's a periodic table. <clears throat> Actually, the inside um, is the one we'll probably use the most. And then there is some information that we'll use later in the PACE that's on the back side. Very important. Hold on to that. I would also suggest... <clears throat> Two things. One is make sure that, oops, I didn't bring it with me. I have a smartphone and I have an app downloaded as a calculator. And uh, I think it's called RealCalc is the one I use. And I paid the couple bucks to own it and not have to have ads. It was worth it. Um, I have not found a um, periodic table app that I regularly use, but there's a lot of them out there. You might find that helpful. Uh, there are some that will help you quiz and learn some of the elements and their symbols. We'll talk more about which ones you need to memorize later. Or sometimes they're good for reference and uh, for quizzing, that kind of a thing. So that would, be, that would be good. Let me see what else I have here in my notes. All right. <clears throat> um, you may be, as you're starting this video, thought, Mr. Anger, I thought you just bought an iPad so that you wouldn't have to stand in front of the camera and use a whiteboard. And the answer is yes. And thank you to everybody who contributed towards that. Uh, there are several things going through chemistry that having that technology is going to really help because I can take pictures of specific pages, charts, problems, and then have that on the video and I can with my Apple Pen um, be writing uh, right on the screen while I'm making the video. So for some types of content that's going to be super helpful. The cool thing for me about using the camera that I use and using the whiteboard is it takes hardly any preparation. I have a sloppy piece of notes to myself. I have the pace. I have markers. I can just turn the camera on and start talking as if I'm talking right to you, talking to a group of students. It does not take near as much time, effort, and preparation. So some topics, like the one just now, will be much easier to do just using the camera. <clears throat> and it's very easy. I just pop the card out, the SD card, and I can from there upload it right to the YouTube channel and post it to the Pay Success website. Okay, so with this first one, and there'll be a few others, maybe even for this Pace and the next several where I'll just use the camera. And then there's some where I'm going to use the new cool iPad and uh, make some videos with that. Anyways, the bottom line is we're going to do this together. Okay, you can do this. You can do chemistry. Yes, it's challenging. Okay, it's gonna be the hardest science you've done so far. There is some math involved, but we are gonna help you through it and you are going to see success in chemistry this year.